Thank you for listening to the Speaking Out on Sex Abuse podcast with host Clara and Jimmy Hinton. If you're new to the podcast, please subscribe and share so you never miss an episode. Search for us on your favorite podcast app, or you can find the podcast on jimmyhinton.org and findingahealingplace.com. Please rate our show, subscribe, and share so we can spread the word. If you would like to support us and get exclusive rewards, go to patreon.com slash speaking out. Find the tier that best fits you and join as a patron of the podcast. Now let's get into the show. Welcome to this week's podcast with host Jimmy Hinton. And Jimmy's mom, Clara. Uh, thank you again to our patrons who make this podcast possible. You guys are awesome, and uh, we we just love you. We were just talking we about sure some of yes. our patrons yes. just a little bit ago. So uh, we love our patrons. We love the support that we get. We love the community most of all, and we could not do this podcast without them. That's my little plug Amen. to get people to become patrons. <laughs> well, yeah. I, well, it is. It's wonderful, and there are little side bonuses, little extras that you get. And I think we have something special coming up this month, don't we, Jimmy? We do. I need yes, to get my uh, little dusty camera dusted I off. Oh, I got my outfit washed. Good. <laughs> That's that's all I'm going to say. <laughs> this is going to be a doozy. Yeah, it is. But for patrons only. Yes. So. <laughs> all yeah. right. So today, um, we were we were volleying back and forth a little bit about um, what would be a good topic. And uh, mom brought up about uh, labels and this, this, this big red label of abuse that seems to be slapped on a lot of people. Um, and you yeah. even brought up, you said, we've probably misused the term abuse right. before. Um, so she said, maybe we should just kind of flesh out uh, what abuse is and how it's defined and how it should be used. Because I know I've been accused of being an abuser. I've had people on my mm -hmm. Facebook page. I had um, one lady who is blocked now, uh, happily blocked. And uh, she was just jumping on like every post that I put she was just combative and then she jumped in on one and she's like you're no better than pedophile abusers and i'm like you're whacked out mm -hmm. so block right. you know it, it's this <clears throat> this over the top labeling 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 and we have uh so many labels for so many people um and here's just a smattering of them uh abuser slanderer gossip narcissist psycho bully Oppressor, homophobe, xenophobe, hypocrite, persecutor, and on and on and on the list goes. Mm -hmm. And so the question is, when does that stop? And is that creating a lot of division and tension? And is that distracting from us actually being protectors? Right. right. And when you spit out that long list, that's only a partial list, by the oh, way. Yeah, I, 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 I mean, this is little, just off the top tiny, of my head in 30 seconds. Right. Smattering of labels that we want to put on people. It causes confusion. It causes dissension. Mm -hmm. It causes bitterness. It mm -hmm. causes, you know, just stirring up what should be uh, peace among people. It's gotten to the point of where it, it's like everybody can be labeled with something and then along with that label comes a whole lot of garbage. And it's almost ridiculous now. Yeah. It, it truly is. Well, I brought up just a little bit ago, you know, now abuse advocacy, which, I mean, we've only been doing this for 10 years. Right. Uh, um, and really not even. Um, I mean, we've, we've been kind of in the heart of it for maybe six years, seven years. Right. Mm -hmm. um, but it was only 10 years ago that, I say only, it was 10 years ago that we found out that you know, right. my dad was an abuser. Mm -hmm. and before that, we didn't know anything about abuse. Um, and I feel like even myself, I had so much more focus two years ago. And the abuse advocacy community, and I, I lament about this a lot, um, but it became so political. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. And by political, I mean uh, political parties. If you don't think right down this line then you know you are you out. are a you homophobe are a xenophobe right. a hypocrite mm -hmm. a, you know a, right. an abuser a narcissist and and enter the labels so that's this is what i'm talking about we become so politically charged yeah. that 
divided uh, and um, divided that opinionated we've stopped um, talking about what abuse actually yes. is and that is that's disheartening yeah isn't it? and you're right i can remember one of my first times attending um a gathering uh for you know education of abuse and for you know mm -hmm. a panel and everything was united at that time I, it was in Jonestown yeah. when I went mm -hmm. with you and it was such a good feeling to know we were all on board we mm -hmm. were together now I've kind of lost interest because mm -hmm. there's so much division yeah and so much backbiting and so much just plain nastiness yeah. unkindness mm -hmm. that if you don't agree 1000 percent with something that is said and it's like Whoa, wait a minute. Yeah. I think we need to um, sharpen our tools, um, become more focused on what the real issue is. Yeah. Well, I mean, that that's exactly it. And, right. you know, I, I brought up about um, the interview that you were in that Heather Sells did with CBN News on the 20-year the anniversary of 9-11 in Shanksville. And, um, you know, uh, Chuck Wagner, a family friend, Right. Uh, he was interviewed, and I, th I thought his interview was excellent. And one of the things that he said at the crash site, at, at, you know, at the United 93 mm -hmm. crash site, he said, we're not the same country we were 20 years ago. And at first I was like, oh, he's going he's gonna to compliment us and say mm -hmm. we, how far we've come since the 9-11 terror attacks. And then he went in and he said, uh, back then 20 years ago, nobody was a Democrat or a Republican conservative or liberal, um, Christian or not, he, he said, we were Americans. And when you saw yes. your neighbor struggling, yes. you stepped in and you helped you your did. neighbor. And he yes. said, I, what, what did he say? I miss, I miss that. I miss he that. said that in tears. I thought that was the most powerful statement of mm -hmm. the entire interview. And truthful was statement. What, yes. What Chuck said right there. Yeah. We have changed. Mm -hmm. We are different. And it's a sad type of different. And I think we need to step back, take a good hard look, and become those people that we know we should be. Yeah, for that sure. That we once were. So I want to talk just about definitions briefly and then, um, you know, kind of flesh this out a little bit. But, you know, I, I think it's definitely okay to use the term abuse. But I think it's, in my opinion, I think it's overused. Uh, I think it's overgeneralized. Mm -hmm. And then I think... To confuse it even more, we have all these subcategories of uh, of what kinds of abusers there are, and you know, and it just the list goes on and on and on, and we get so focused on trying to figure out whether somebody crosses that line if they're an abuser or not, and we 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 get so focused on that 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 we forget the I simplicity. I like the of, micromanager, or you know, right, yeah, yeah. So, oh, and and it it really at the end of the day accomplishes nothing. Mm -hmm. Except chaos. But I think that's part of why, you know, we've lamented about this too. There's such animosity against the church in general yeah. among a lot of advocates that um, they forget that there are a lot of really good, honest people mm -hmm. who are Christians right. who are still part of the evangelical church right. who aren't whack jobs. They're not, you yeah. know, I like, they're not. Yeah. Um there yes. are some of us who are still there are good, quite honest, normal, true, honest, compassionate people and protective who people are part who hate of, abuse. Right, right. Who who are part of God's family, and to just use that label that all church leaders are abusive. Mm -hmm. All every so institution so. yes, is corrupt. Every church is right. Yeah, uh, I don't like the words "all" and "every." Yeah, that that's you know caution against using those. For but sure. I think even that, you know, I I had, um, I mean, this is going back, but I had put a post before just saying, you know, which I think is okay to say. I'll probably have listeners too that get upset with this, but I don't, I don't care. I mean, um, police officers, right? There's such a small fraction of mm, horrific police officers right. and they're out there. I mean- they're definitely out there. They should be prosecuted. Um, I think, uh, you know, this whole case with George Floyd, I think that was justice. I think, um, you know, I'm, I'm completely in agreement. That was excessive right. force. That mm -hmm. was, um, 
that it was wrong. It was horrible. It was horrific. It was unnecessary. Um, it should be strongly condemned in right. the strongest words possible. Right. right. Um, but we should also be able to say not all police officers are bad. And you look at what's going on mm-hmm. now, and there's absolute silence among advocates and the media mm-hmm. about uh, police brutality where the police officers are the ones being brutalized. Right. Mm-hmm. They're being kicked in the head. Mm-hmm. Um, these people, some of these police officers are left brain dead um, because because of the force used. Uh, they're being shot. They're being stabbed. Or just the, the overall disrespect that has grown hatred. out of... It's not disrespect. Right, there's hatred. And, and hatred. There's, and it's dangerous for them. I, it is. Yeah. So, you know, it, mm-hmm. when we mislabel things um, or overlabel things... Uh, we get this this inherent animosity, and you look at what's happening in the skies right now. Um, yeah, air. I don't. I have to fly next month, and I'm dreading it. Mm-hmm. I'm watching yeah. all these yeah. news yeah. reports and all mm-hmm. these uh, all these videos, and there are news articles about it where it's just people are getting really ugly on airplanes. Mm-hmm. They're getting violent. Uh, people are are losing their minds. Um, so. I think people get stirred up, Jimmy. They they get on a bandwagon then, and it becomes the popular thing to do. And people, and there's a mob mentality. Like, I mean, it, when it, people get upset, that that feeds into other they people. They feed and we into all that, and you get on, get and you think you're it. doing good, and you have all this yeah. energy, and you think we've got to stop this. Mm-hmm. Um, we are being whatever, you know. We're being warriors for oh, justice. Boy. Meanwhile, they're yeah. just being warriors, <laughs> yes. know, causing all and, kinds of havoc yeah. and. Right. There's a right way and a wrong way of doing things. Yeah. And I think the Bible is very clear about that. Um, And this labeling of everybody, you are right. There's sub labels on top of labels Mm -hmm. and subcategories Mm -hmm. on top of categories. And we've gotten so to the extreme that now when we hear abuse, we could look at anybody and say, there's an abuser. I think it's happening a lot. It is. I really do. I think there's an over labeling. It really is. Where and an back, overuse of that term. It is. Ten years ago, it was major to hear of a case of child abuse or uh, of abuse in the home where a wife yeah. was, was battered or whatever. Now, we kind of, because the word has been so overused, it's been diluted. And politicized. And I mean, politicized. it's been politicized, too. Yes. And it's, it, it's taken on different meaning. Yeah. So very, very sad. So what is the definition of abuse? Um, This is Merriam-Webster, so nothing that profound. Um, But definition of abuse, a corrupt practice or custom. Um, An example is the bullying of of votes and other election abuses. Uh, Definition number two, improper or excessive use or treatment. Um, and I think excessive is important. Mm-hmm. You know, there are people who, there are people, I mean, I, there are parents. I'm one of them, you know? Like every normal parent loses their cool on multiple occasions, and they might display that in different right. ways. But, you know, fortunately for me, mine is mostly just silence, passive aggressiveness, you know? Uh, but Mine we get agitated, wasn't right? silence. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Mine was explosive. Huh. But yeah, but but improper, mm-hmm. where you turn that on the kid, right? And and belittle kids and use that to malign destroy. them, destroy yes. them, tear them Hurt. down. That's improper Harm. use. Yes. Uh, I, I thought Christine Parker had a great explanation mm-hmm. last week on our podcast about this very thing. Yeah. And, um, you know, for those who missed that, you might want to go back and listen to that podcast. She, she talked about how ego, job. ego is, yeah. is, it's okay to have ego. She, we should have a certain degree right. of an ego. She did a great job in explaining that. If you want to get really weird about things, we've all been abusive at some time or another. But that's not what we're talking about. Yeah. That's, we, the label has become so uh, widespread. The net has you know, been cast out so far that everybody is under it now. That's not what we're advocates yeah. for. Well, so. I've even seen posts recently, and, and oh, I, I mean, I, pretty rough. I, 
I don't want to. I don't want to bash the advocacy community, and that's not. That's not what I'm doing at all. Uh, but I've seen weirder and weirder mm-hmm. things within, within, the advocacy abuse advocacy community, that just made it makes me want to step back and and. I mean, I could get so wrapped up in in all this bizarre stuff, and I saw a post about how Jesus was an abuser, and um, <clears throat> just this this almost rabid hatred for the Apostle Paul, and he was a misogynist, mm-hmm. and he was he was an abuser, and he was you know on and on and on and on. And when does it stop? Where does it stop? Um, so, I mean, that's just kind of the point we're making. When right. you over-label people, you carry it radicalizes people, right. and we become the very thing that we detest. Right. You've spoken on that several times yeah. in the past several months, and I think you've done a beautiful job at it. And I think we need to continue addressing it yeah. to, to kind of rein things in and get back focused where we should be. Yeah. And, and we'll talk about practical steps and kind of what this looks right. like in this episode, too. Um, so a third definition for abuse is language that condemns or vilifies usually unjustly, intemperately, and angrily. Uh, so it's this condemnation, this talking down, this belittling. Mm-hmm. Um, that's abuse. Okay? Uh, verbal abuse. And uh, and we should call it abuse. We right. should call it what it is. Absolutely. Um and then number four, physical maltreatment, uh, child abuse, sexual abuse. Uh, it's that physical aspect of uh, of mistreating somebody. Um, of, of, and, and if you go back to the very in improper ways, very t- yeah, in a corrupt practice, mm-hmm. in an evil, a wrong way, a sinful way, yeah, intention to hurt, to stripping harm. away somebody's consent, <clears throat> right? That's abuse, absolutely. Absolutely. Um, so we should call that what it is. Mm-hmm. And then the definition of oppression, which the Bible talks a lot about, um, it actually doesn't mention abuse, at least in the English. There are a couple translations, a couple places that use the word abuse, but um, it's kind of a stretch to use that definition. Right. But oppression, yeah. it talks a lot about mm-hmm. oppression. Um, so oppression is is defined as unjust or cruel uh, exercise of authority or power. So we always hear, we hear all the time, abuse is all about power. And yes and no, sometimes people are just abusive people because mm-hmm. they're cruel. Right. Um, it's not about power. They're just nasty they people. They enjoy hurting others. Yeah. Um, let's be real. There are people out there that love doing that. Right. I remember reading way back when a book, uh, about James Dobson, and he talks about when he was a teenager and then his early life in college, how he enjoyed making fun of people. He just relished in that. And he said, as he got older, he wondered, why? Why did I do that? He didn't know. He just enjoyed it at the time. And I thought, wow. But that yeah, I have my own opinions on him. He's. <laughs> I know you do. <laughs> I'll keep them to myself, okay. but, but it, yeah, found, it all makes sense. <laughs> and at the time, though, abuse wasn't used. Abuse, abuse of the language. Mm-hmm. I'm talking 25, 30 years ago, maybe more, that I read this book. And it just stood out so much because here's this person who I respected so much. And he's saying, I don't know why I did it. I was a boy. I, I bullied, we had a bully in our family. Um, he enjoyed bullying people to a degree. Why? No, I, I, I don't know. Yeah. Um, I mean, some people just enjoy some, it, yeah. but you know, uh, but and it's wrong. Saying, I mean, it's all wrong. Right. But it wasn't for power, so to speak. Yeah, and and I get what you're saying that we always want to click in this power. A person who abuses alcohol, I don't think they do it for power. Yeah, you know, it, it, it's a different. Well, I th- I think this distinction is important. It is. Uh, it might seem subtle, but it's important. No, it's so very important. so abuse is this corrupt practice or custom. It's uh, Im- improper or excessive use uh, yes. or treatment, where oppression is unjust or cruel exercise of authority or power. So where abuse isn't necessarily always about power, oppression is. Right. 
A passion and, is and, always about power. And that was addressed. Exercising authority. Right. And that's addressed a good bit in the scriptures. Yeah. And that's where we want to, you know, hook up our definition of abuse with the scriptural meaning of oppression. I think yeah. that's what we're trying to say. Well, you know, I, I wrote this statement down. The Bible is more interested in perversions of justice. Right. You know, people being unjust, mm -hmm. people being unfair, right. um, people being... Um, tipping the scales in one direction or the other, uh, either in favor of or against somebody. Mm -hmm. uh, the Bible is more interested in perversions of justice, oppression, which um, in the Hebrew language, it's, it's described as ruthlessness. Um, mm -hmm. And it's more concerned with deceit or trickery than it is with painting these broad strokes and, and all its subcategories of, of quote unquote abuse. Um, so the Bible, the reason it's interested in uh, these themes of justice, uh, oppression, and deceit, is that all of these things in the scriptures require two things. One, a recognition that it's happening mm -hmm. and calling it for what it is. Right. And, and simplifying that. Um, it, it's, in my opinion, uh, it's pretty simple to define whether somebody's just abrasive or whether they're abusive. Well, you brought it out last week too. Are they annoying or are right. they oppressive? Yeah. Are, and, are and they right? Some There's people a, are just radical people, but they're not yeah. abusive. Right. They're, they're just, just plain annoying. annoying. <laughs> you want to tell them to be quiet. So you know, yeah. But they're not. Uh, their intention is not to harm or to oppress. You know, anyone's right. rights or you know, as a human being. And the irony and, too in that is that annoying people are not necessarily immoral people no. that doesn't make them a bad person mm -hmm. uh, we're all annoying just makes them irritating <laughs> right as all get out uh, yeah but the church has more the church now i'm talking about the church it has more animosity towards people who are annoying. persistently annoying yes than it does people who are oppressive who do abuse their authority and their power look Case in point, mm -hmm. look at all of the oppressive church leaders, and I use the term oppressive yeah. rather than abusive because Wait, excuse they me. are using their authority to strong arm mm -hmm. people right. and to hold them under their control, mm -hmm. period. And I think that's clear when you, when you paint that picture. There's a distinct difference, and I think people can see that clearly. Mm -hmm. And what you are saying is that within the, the um, body of Christ— there's more dissension, more splitting, more tearing off, more falling away due to personality issues, the annoying yeah. person, the pain in the butt person, the person that's always there um, critiquing mm -hmm. the, the sermons or the Bible classes or what color the carpet is mm -hmm. or whatever. There are more church splits and more divisions over that than over the oppression of people within. Yeah. Yeah, that's absolutely. That's sad. That's yeah. sad. So I think that's why these themes are so important, these themes of justice. Justice mm -hmm. is huge. It's pivotal. I've talked right. about this a lot. I wrote about it in my book. The The foundation of God, God's very foundation, mm -hmm. is built on righteousness and justice. That right. is his foundation. Right. Um, the righteousness is uh, using balanced scales, not tipping the scale in one, either in favor mm -hmm. or against somebody. You balance the scales and you look at each person according to their deeds, not according to relationship status, uh, wealth, poverty, uh, the way they look, the way they dress. Like none of that matters when you're balancing scales. Isn't it interesting, though, that in real life, I'll call it real life, those things matter the most. Yeah, yeah, I know. And it's we have it so backwards. We do. Um, and then the justice is meeting out what's owed to somebody, um, good or bad. Mm -hmm. And uh, God is not the only one who can exercise justice. Our criminal justice system is not the only form of justice. Right. And we've talked about mm -hmm. that. Like we are, we're to meet out justice. Um, that doesn't mean vengeance or retribution or you know, right. being vicious, vile people, no, getting even with people. No. Justice is just um, issuing somebody what's owed them according to their deeds. So, for example, uh, and I think this is important. This is why terminology is important. Simplifying things is important. If somebody's mm -hmm. using trickery 
deceit. Right. My my own father. He used trickery, deceit, uh, masqueraded as somebody who was incredibly righteous. He would abuse his victims. He would abuse his victims, literally hear the, the, the tires coming up the driveway of the father of these victims. And the father has spoken publicly about right. this and has given me, me and us permission to right. speak about this. So this is not breaking any confidentiality. He would, my dad would hear the gravel underneath the tires, would dress the kids real quick, open up a Bible, put the kid in his lap, and pretend like he was reading the Bible yeah. with, with the kids he just abused. Now, that is corruption. That's deceit. That's lying. It's trickery. It's manipulation. It's coercion. It's abuse. It's a combination of all of these things. And so, what does justice look like in cases like that? If there's not criminal justice, what does human justice look like? Human justice is, first of all, a strong rebuke in the strongest form possible. Mm -hmm. well, it's... Another is is um, requiring that person to stay away from children say forever. Yes, absolutely. And yeah. keeping a person mm -hmm. like that away from innocence in the body of Christ, mm -hmm. in the church, forever. Right. Mm -hmm. So the Bible always requires a response. And, and again, I think we go back to this over, over labeling of people. We're slapping labels on everybody. Mm. At some point, <laughs> who are you going to associate with? Where, that's what I keep thinking. There's going to be nobody left. I mean, I told there's, you, I, I went on Twitter for five minutes yeah. today and it, it made me sick. It's, I was like, there, I can't do there this. There will be no one left for us to talk to or to be around. I know. Because everybody's wearing this label of some sort. Yeah. So we're not diminishing the meaning of abuse or oppression, but merely saying stop labeling everybody as an abuser yeah. um, of some sort. And and call an eye for an eye and a tooth a tooth. You know, yeah. just let's call it what it is. And I would, I mean, I would absolutely reserve that label. I, I think it's a great label. I, I think we should call abusers abusers. Well, but... we had another whole podcast about that because the abuser yeah. should be called that because that person did those actions. Therefore, he wears that name. Who mm -hmm. are we? We are what our actions say. Yeah. We are. Our actions speak. Our fruit is there. We wear the fruit that we produce. So, and I, I mean, I rarely read from the Bible in podcasts, just because you know I want to be sensitive and respectful. I know, uh, you know, a lot of survivors might be triggered by scriptures, so I'll put a little dis disclaimer in here. Um, I'm going to read a few verses, but I just want to illustrate this point that the Bible is not this bizarre, you know, um, ancient. Mm -hmm. um, set of documents from these misogynistic, abusive people and, you know, that we should just use as toilet paper. It, it actually, it makes a lot of sense. And if we, if we strip away all the, all the noise mm -hmm. that's going on around right. us and we look at what the intent is to keep innocence safe, uh, to focus on these themes of justice, um, deceit, uh, oppression, and to understand what the required response is, um, I think a whole lot, pe a whole lot of people would be a whole mm -hmm. lot safer. Right. Um, sure. So, so Paul writes this in Second Timothy chapter three. He says this. I think it's just so powerful. But understand this: that in the last days there will come times of difficulty, for people will be lovers of self. Uh, and he's not talking about loving yourself. He's talking about excessive. Um, this is, you know, borderline being narcissistic, mm -hmm. um, selfish. Uh, they'll be lovers of money, proud, arrogant. Here's this word, abusive. The word is um, uh, actually blasphemous. Disobedient to their parents, ungrateful, unholy, heartless, unappeasable. Boy, that one that's is huge. That's yeah. a modern one, right. isn't it? Mm -hmm. Um or current, I should say, mm -hmm. slanderous, without self-control, brutal, not loving good, 
treacherous, reckless, swollen with conceit, uh, lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God, having the appearance of godliness but denying its power. And listen to this. Avoid such people. Mm -hmm. For among them are those who, and here I think is the most important part, for among them are those who creep into households and capture weak women. I think weak is an unfortunate translation. I don't have time to really get into that, but I, I think that's an unfortunate English translation of this word. Um, it, 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 I think a better term would be vulnerable uh, women. Uh, it's not talking about weak. Women are not weak. Um, Paul wasn't referring to women as being weak. I think I, we, it's a poor any translation. of us who use our brains <clears throat> a, even a little bit could figure out yeah. that, that it means vulnerable. I think Open vulnerable is to, a better term. Yes. But they capture vulnerable women, mm -hmm. so they creep into households. They capture vulnerable women burdened with sins and led astray by various passions, um, always learning and never able to arrive at a knowledge of the truth. So... It's like they're they're always learning, but they're not they're not using that knowledge for anything good. They're learning how to manipulate people, mm -hmm. how yeah. to creep into the homes of vulnerable women, and clearly this is a reference to um, to sexual enticement. Right. And then Paul goes on and he says, um, "Indeed, all who desire to live a godly life in Christ Jesus will be persecuted, while evil people and impostors will go on from bad to worse." Deceiving and being deceived. It's this deception and self-deception. I'm yeah. a good person. Yep. Yep. Um, and they really believe it. I think it's that so. self-deception. Yep. One of the me letters, and God are tight. One of the letters your dad wrote to me was, yeah, I abused, but it wasn't all that bad. Think of everything good mm -hmm. that I did. Yeah. So he, he's thinking of himself as, you know what? I did he's more good than hero. bad. Yeah. I look how many people I helped. Mm -hmm. Doesn't matter who who I hurt. Yeah. But look how how much good I did. Mm -hmm. And that's exactly what I think is talking about here. Deceit is mentioned in the Bible so often. Mm -hmm. Over we and kind over of and overlook over the impounding message that is behind that. It I think deceit is the epitome of evil. Mm-hmm. If it, and one of the things I think we tend we like in others is their vulnerability. We say we do anyway. Just be yourself. But yeah. often we find ourselves doing what we put on a false facade. Mm -hmm. uh, we put on our church facade. We put on our work facade. We put on our home facade. We yep. put on these different facades. I'm not sure why, but I love. The person who can be themselves wherever. Mm -hmm. I love that you wear sandals and bare feet wherever. I love yeah. that you dress how you do wherever you are. Mm -hmm. I know wherever I yeah, see you. you should be the same person whenever everywhere you go. You are like you are. And I think that is a trait that we all should have, we mm -hmm. want for. Deceitfulness, whether it's in how we dress, talk, and our actions, mm -hmm. is not... Um, accepted nor is it tolerated or tolerated in fact is condemned yeah and what do we know about the sexual abuser and the uh, mental the, the the mental abuse that goes on is based on deceit mm -hmm. that oppression is based on coming off as somebody that we're not yeah, and but not how, just doing that because Christine I mean Christine Parker talked about that too she said some, sometimes that. It's not about secrecy because sometimes secrets right. are necessary. Yeah. Sometimes people tell you things that you have to keep confidential. Mm -hmm. Right. You have to no, guard that's that secret. Not what we're talking about. Right. For the safety of people, sometimes right. you have to maintain secrecy. I think you and I have been put in positions it's, like that. Yes. It, and, you know, it, it's the deception. Mm -hmm. And I'll take it a step further because, I mean, scripture takes it a step further. It's the willful right. deception, mm -hmm. it's the intentionality of deceiving somebody and masquerading yep. in order to steal away something from somebody else that doesn't belong to you mm -hmm. and exercise authority and, a pa and power over them to take that away from them. That is the definition of oppression. Mm -hmm. Right. And the Bible has no tolerance for None. it. None. Zero. So, you know, again, the answer, the answer in scripture is not 
what do we do with what do we do with these abusers and oppressors? Uh, the answer in scripture is, what are you going to do to safeguard everybody else to protect mm -hmm. them? What are you going to do? Right. Yep. Um, are you going to reprimand them? Are you going to rebuke them? Are you going to protect the innocents? Are you going to avoid them? Are you going to keep them away from the rest of the flock? Are you going to act as a protective barrier? Uh, the Bible is less interested in going around and uh, all this bizarre stuff we do. Like we, you know, some churches coddle abusers. I, you know, I've written about that repeatedly. Mm -hmm. I've spoken about that repeatedly. Um Churches will coddle the abuser. They just need more community. The grace of Jesus covers all. You know, you hear all this stuff. That is that is an improper response, big time. You know, when we get to the nuts and bolts of what the scriptures say about the oppressed and, and what we should do to keep oppression out from among our people, it puts a big burden of responsibility on us. Mm -hmm. And people don't want that responsibility. Right. That's, it's that's easier why it's, yep. to label people mm -hmm. and to point a finger and say, there's somebody, you know, I'm not going to be around, or there's somebody. It's much easier than it is to actually try to do something to prevent that bit of oppression yeah. from continuing on. And when you have somebody who's deceitful and they masquerade, um, they're going to throw every tool in the toolbox oh, yeah. at you. I mean, they are. Yeah. They're going to use. Mm -hmm. They're going to use uh, flattery. They're mm -hmm. going to use uh, guilt trips. They're going to use um, charisma. They're they're going to use kindness. They're going to use benevolence. They're going to dig deep in their pockets. They they will use every tool that's in their arsenal to worm their way back into the life of the people who they can abuse. And so, you know, the the scripture is so clear. Like you need to you need to look out for these people who are ravenous. Mm -hmm. Jesus calls them ravenous wolves. Um, then he says, "You will mm -hmm. recognize them by their fruit." Okay, is that just to recognize them and say, "Well, there's an, you know there's an abuser"? <laughs> no, no. I, yeah. What no. what is the purpose? Mm -hmm. we to weed them out, get rid of them, absolutely. To out keep from them among the flock. That's right. Yes, keep them away the from the innocents yes. who they repeatedly mm -hmm. harm using deception and trickery mm -hmm. and power and authority. It's that oppression. Again, these themes of, um, I wrote them down, the themes of perversions of justice, oppression, or, or also called ruthlessness, and deceit, trickery. So how do we, in the world of advocacy, how do we get kind of back on track? I think we've, we've veered a bit to the right, gotten a bit off track, what mm -hmm. would be the one nugget of wisdom we could yeah. leave our listeners with that would help get us back uh, on track of being advocates for the oppressed? It's simple. It's simple. Stop talking about politics and about mm -hmm. infectious diseases. Um, stop advocating for masks or no masks or vaccines or no vaccines. I love what Nagme said. She's like, people have no idea what my stance is on vaccinations and they're not going to find out. Loved it. Same with me. Loved, loved it. Um, I don't want to focus on that. Right. Not that it's not important. It is important. But if we're talking That's about truly, not, genuinely yes. protecting the masses, um, we... We really need to safeguard against abuse, we, against right. trickery, mm -hmm. deceit, deception, um, um, acts of justice. We need to step in and be protective barriers and stand between abusers and the abused. I love the simplicity of what you've just said. I it, love it. It should be sim simple. And, and that's God inspired, it's from the scriptures. And I know, you know, that's, that's what we're supposed to do. Mm -hmm. I, it's not complicated. We've no. complicated things. I, yeah. I, I like that, Jimmy. Um, Thank you. I mean, I, I could go on and on. I could give a whole list mm. of, of soapbox issues, but, you know, I think point blank, use intuition and observe people. Watch people. Um, understand where their heart is, what their motives are. Are they, are they lying, even subtle lies? Are they using deceit and trickery? In order to steal something away from somebody, um, are they are they using their power and authority? Do they wield that as a weapon? Um, do they demand that people step in line? 
Mm-hmm. Um, if they do, uh, that that's that's oppression. Um, I demand that you follow me because I'm your right. pastor. And no, <laughs> no, I like no. That. I like that buzzer. Yeah, uh, I mean, yeah. Uh, be on guard. Yeah. Look for that kind of stuff and and call that stuff out. Um, it, it, it it's not that complicated, and we've. We've just slapped so many labels on so many things and have gotten so distracted and so out of tune um, that you, you step outside and you just feel it. You feel the anxiety. You feel mm-hmm. the anger. You feel the radicalized um, people uh, on every end of the political spectrum um, and just the sheer hatred and, and um, anger and I think I love having to what, correct what people. what Chuck said. At the end where he said, um, 20 years ago, we were not Republicans or Democrats. We were Americans. Yeah. 20 years ago, we didn't see all this division and labeling within the church either. We were either Mm -hmm. Christians or non. We weren't these big liberals who believed in this and this and this or conservatives Mm -hmm. who didn't believe. And, you know, um, now we have pro-lifers, pro-lifers maybe. We have all these different labels that we've put in the name of Christianity, followers of God, lovers of God and his Mm -hmm. word, to the point of where, man, we've messed things up so badly. We've really messed things up. And it's time to get back to the basics of, you know, who we are, what our beliefs are, and what we're going to do about that. Yeah, it just becomes really hard. It becomes really hard to protect people Mm -hmm. when... Uh, we've we get sidetracked. That's all. Yeah, when, we're when we've so gotten sidetracked. radicalized and right. are, are just so bent on figuring out who's an abuser and or, that or, creates or an oppressor disunity. Or, you know. I I think what I miss most from maybe five years ago is the unity we had within the circle of advocacy. Yeah, and I don't feel that same unity right now. No, but we can get it back. We I mean, it's can. not you know. I, I certainly. Again, I don't want to put labels on people and say, well, that, you know, there are abusive people in advocacy. No, I'm just I, I think saying just it's easy for really all off. of us to veer off to the side. We get, and I, we and get I'm, distracted. I mean, I'll include myself in that. I mean, I've we gotten distracted, distracted by all kinds of different yes. things. So, you know, this isn't pointing fingers as much as no. saying that we all need to, to really refocus and recalibrate mm-hmm. and and focus on these themes and 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 really be protectors of innocent people we need to and, do uh, a refresh yeah. yeah refresh and reboot yep here we um, go so we'll leave you with that um our truth bomb for the day is um again the bible is more interested in perversions of justice oppression um and deceit than it is with painting these broad strokes and all these subcategories of quote-unquote abuse so um just retool, refocus. Um, Refresh, let's, reboot. <laughs> let's all let's all be neighbors yeah. to each other and, and link arms and, and protect the innocent. Uh, thank you for tuning into this episode, and we'll catch you next round. Thanks again for listening to today's episode. Thank you to our patrons who make the podcast possible. If you found it helpful, please follow on Spreaker and search for the Speaking Out on Sex Abuse podcast in your favorite podcast app. Be sure to hit subscribe and rate the show. If you believe in what we do, consider supporting the podcast by becoming a patron and check out the cool rewards our patrons receive. Share with your friends and tell the world. Join us in speaking out on sex abuse so we can change the tides and prevent abuse.